Welcome to another episode of Two Bears, One Movie. We're discussing the fantastic, the wonderful, the powerful Christopher Nolan's Oppenheimer. So Oppenheimer was finally released in a weekend that has really smashed the box office. After months of flops and failures, strikes from the actors, strikes from the writers, Hollywood was seeing an absolute kind of downpour of negativity. Barbie Heimer weekend hit us. Now this is not a review of Barbie, but it was a absolutely like the like bombastic award that had been cleared gone around of a weekend for the box office for cinema lovers cinema goers and Oppenheimer was at the forefront of this directed by the wonderful uh, Christopher Nolan it follows uh, Oppenheimer who is the the master the creator of the atomic bomb who was included in or head of the Manhattan Project back in the 1940s. The movie itself is is three hours long, but I can honestly say it does not feel like three hours long. It absolutely whizzes, boy. For me, this feels like Christopher Nolan's JFK meets The Social Network. And that's very, very telling in terms of he's such a, he's the master of indie slash blockbuster. He can blend the two so well. And this at times feels like <clears throat> one of these political indie films. And then uh, like also has that kind of gravitas of an epic blockbuster in it at times as well. The lots of words have been going around such as Masterpiece. Uh, one of his best films of all time, the best film of the 24th century. So if you break down what is a masterpiece, for me, the masterpiece kind of, it really kind of boils into a couple of different points rather than just one. Is the movie flawless? Some masterpieces are some of the greatest movies of all time. I don't think I would say they they are flawless. Some of them might have plot holes or little things that you can maybe nitpick in. But that's not just one of the things that makes a masterpiece, in my opinion. How does it stand the test of time? Rewatchability. If you can if people, not just me, are watching it so many times because it just stands the test of time, no matter how long it is. The likes of The Godfather, Goodfellas. 12 Angry Men, these type of films, that no matter what decade or era or type of genre, that they just stand the test of time no matter what. Um, and that really has a huge influence on my view of what a masterpiece is. Maybe other film critics, film lovers, cinephiles, maybe they have different kind of aspects of what they feel a masterpiece may be how it makes them feel personally emotionally mentally i think cinema is about touching an individual in that moment and i think oppenheimer really gravitates towards it um it's absolutely spectacular the editing is amazing killian morphy just he's definitely got it nominated for an oscar he's Stands out here. He's in almost every shot of this movie. He just. He looks so gaunt. And depressed. And yet so determined. And it's such a. Like masterful performance. Robert Downey Jr. is probably the best. I've ever seen him in on anything. Definitely. Will uh, also get nominated in my opinion. Lots of other great performances. The likes of uh, Matt Damon. Josh Harney. Um. Really, Emily Blunt, who's also quite uh, amazing in this movie. Florence Pugh as well. Everything she's in is she just kind of steals the scenes as well when she's she's such a great presence. And I've seen, I heard people think this is the most Nolan type film ever. Mm, I still, if we had to kind of like Nolan-y 
type films ever I'd say probably Memento and Prestige probably bend in at the two most Nolan type films I've ever seen but this is so so good the writing the cinematography the score from the score from Ludwig Gorson is absolutely just it makes the hair stand up on on the back of your neck it's it's almost shimmering around hands if hands in if but it's different it has a different kind of gravitas towards it and it really really is absolutely epic and i do feel it will also be nominated in the oscars the ending is absolutely superb i don't want to give any spoilers away the ending is just kind of like it's real it's almost dystopian like the ending I know that probably doesn't make sense, but that's, yeah, the, the it kind of lingers in and intertwines with the I am the destroyer of worlds and the, the, the famous quote that Oppenheimer said all those years ago, which does play some significance, obviously, within the film itself. It's a lot of talking, but, but the pacing, the editing, it really makes that, and the acting, those talking scenes really are ramped up with intensity. Um, and it's not once you'll feel bored. Absolutely phenomenal uh, piece of cinema. Definitely one of the films of the year, if not the film of the year. One of the best films of the 21st century, in my humble opinion. Tell me what you think. Uh, the, the, did you find it to be as powerful? And is it a masterpiece? Uh, or were you disappointed? Did you see Barbie on the same weekend and rather that? Please comment below, like, subscribe. Tell me what you think about the wonderful, powerful, epic Oppenheimer. I'll be doing my best of Nolan ranking list on the channel soon as well as our TikTok. And I'll catch you on another episode of Two Beers, One Movie in Association with Top Floor Films.